So, sorry about the delay in the update. I know I said I'd have a video out on Monday, but I um, had a natural gas leak in the garage, and yeah, I couldn't exactly work in here while I was like that, and I couldn't get a tech out until the day after. So, sorry about this video being late, but good news, it's an actual build video. Enjoy. All right, let's start building. All right, so uh, for this week's episode of the exoskeleton build, I'm going to talk to you a bit about the joints I'm planning on using for the exoskeleton. So if we climb up this precarious ladder, we can take a look at the original exoskeleton. So on the original exoskeleton, I had a regular hinge at the elbow, and then we used a ball joint for the shoulder, which gave a decent bit of flexibility but really, you couldn't lift your arm up sideways, and it was pretty limited in what it could do. So, what I need to do is find a better joint. And that's exactly what I did. So, trying to find a joint that can take uh, high loads in any direction is a bit tricky, but there's something called a universal joint. Now, these can be used in um, car and truck transmissions for the drive shaft so you can still get that rotation with a bit of flex like that. What this is is a three-quarter inch um, ratchet socket adapter. Uh, so it's already designed to take probably a good couple hundred pounds of load um, in torque so it's probably pretty strong. The only problem is again it gives you a lot more flexibility but you're still gonna need one more degree of flexibility to be able to replicate a shoulder. So my plan is to mount this off of the back, which then gives me a nice range of movement like this. The only problem is um, when the arm is down, you can't lift it up in this rotation, or when the arm is down, you can't lift it sideways. So what I need to do is add a rotary joint on the end of this, which is pretty easy because I'm using a socket, so I can use any other socket attachments. Which brings me to the next piece. So this is also called a universal adapter, but it's actually basically a giant ball joint. And it can't spin, but it can give you a bit of flex in all directions. So I'm planning on using these for the legs. One for the ankle, to be able to give your leg ankle um, mobility, and two for the hips. So when you're running around, the exoskeleton can move with your body without being kind of rigid um, box that you're stuck in, like the original exoskeleton. So let's take a look at what I've done. So this is what I've welded together. And what I've done is I've basically taken one of the three quarter inch universal adapters and I've welded a um, socket adapter on the top. So what will happen is the leg will actually attach here. So basically you'll have your leg which attaches like that and then that goes up obviously. Then you have all this flexibility. So then what I'm going to do is this piece will actually be attached to a weldment which attaches to the boots and puts this right at your ankle joint. So what that means is you'll put these boots on and then you'll be able to strap the exoskeleton legs, insert a little uh, 
um, cotter pin to hold them in place, and boom, you're ready to go. So that goes back to my idea of having a modular exoskeleton. So basically you'll put on all these things like the boots, the gloves, the, the armor chest plate and all that, and then the actual mechanical parts will kind of snap on, making it very modular and easy, one, to replace bo broken parts, and two, just to um, make it more customizable basically. Because if we're using standard fittings like these sockets, we have pretty much endless possibilities in the different things we could attach. So basically, we could have like an armored leg we could put on. We'd have a light leg. We'd have a leg designed for running really fast, or one for just taking really heavy loads. So really, the possibilities are quite endless with that. And that, having this universal joint, means when my ankle bends like that, or like this, it can bend with it. Same with if it goes forwards or back. In fact, this joint probably has a bit more flexibility than my ankle, which could be a problem if it tries to stress me past that point. But luckily, the boots are pretty rigid, so they should prevent my ankle from going too far. So the tricky part now is figuring out how to attach this to a rubber boot. Now luckily, this is a steel sole boot with steel toes, which means if I remove the insole, I can drill a hole through the sole and out the other side. And that means I can actually bolt to um, a weldment which this is attached to. Now I like that because again that keeps it modular. It means it's not permanent to the boot and these are pretty expensive boots so I'd rather not ruin them. The only question I have is if I'm putting metal across this boot and bolting it in, how is that going to affect my flexibility while I'm running around and whatnot? I want to minimize that um, as best I can because the plan for this exoskeleton is to be a lightweight, uh, powerful um, augmentation like in Call of Duty, so I need to be able to run around in it. I don't know how well I'll be able to run around with it if I'm strapping steel bars to the bottom of my boots. So, what I'm thinking about doing is using a router to remove a layer of rubber so I can basically put the steel flush with the rubber underneath, bolt it down, and then hopefully that won't really affect when I'm walking around. So let's take a look at what I have on the steel rack and see what we make. Luckily I've been collecting a lot of scrap steel. Alright, so I have a whole bunch of this scrap steel bar I picked up really cheap from the metal supermarket. And it's quarter inch thick, which works out well because the tread on this boot is about quarter inch as well. So what I'm thinking is if I use the router to machine off a s section for this to go in, then I can sit this flush with the, the surface of the tread. Then I can weld to another part which holds this guy. So, I think what I can do is if I just remove this pad and then have it come off straight like that, that comes out right here, which is a good spot for the ankle to get mounted to. So, because this one section I might be able to use like an X-Acto knife or something to clear it off, but I might as well use a router with a milling bit to just shave off that section. So let's see how that works. So now I'm gonna adjust the router, so I'm only taking off about a quarter inch, or basically the height of this. So it's actually pretty easy to do. You just loosen it up and then you tighten like so. And there we go. And you tighten up the other part. And as you can see, it doesn't come past the steel now, which means I'm going to attach this to the table and then just start machining away the rubber. So unfortunately I don't have a router table, so I'm going to do something you shouldn't do, which is clamp the router in a vise. Now it's a plastic casing, so you can't clamp it too tight, it wobbles a bit. 
probably as good as we're going to get though. So, the on switch for this is right here, which is convenient. And there's a little lock too to keep it on. Now the tricky part is actually watching what I'm doing. But let's give it a shot. I've successfully removed one of the sections of the tread. Now the steel bar fits nice and in there. Now, unfortunately, it's on a little angle, which means I'm gonna have to cut this, bend it, and then weld it again so it matches the contour of the boot. I could just um, cut a straight line like that, but this proved not to be very accurate, so I just followed one of the sections, and it'll probably look cooler that way anyways. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the chop saw to cut this almost all the way through. And then what I'll do is I'll bend it and then weld the seam shut to give me that V shape to match the bottom of the boot. have ourselves a fit. So now I just have to weld that up, make it strong again, and we've got a piece that fits the boot perfectly. in this plate I made so we can actually bolt it to the steel sole of the boot. Alright, so now that we have our, hole, our plate with the holes in it, we're going to transfer those holes to the boot and then we'll thread these and we'll be able to sink some screws in from the other side. As you can see, we got the two screws in the bottom. Now we have the steel plate mounted rigidly to the boot. So we just have to grind these guys off, and that'll also tell us how tight we need to tighten it, uh, just to make them flush again. And now we can get to the fun part, welding a structure on here for the ankle. All right, let's get rid of these screws. So now, when we take this off, we know exactly where to screw it to to get to the right tightness because it'll be flush with the metal here. All right, so that's it for now. now. I know I didn't make that much progress, but as you can see, I'm starting the mechanical build, and I'm hoping to do, hoping to work on it more on a daily basis. So hopefully, it'll start coming together because. Just like you guys, I, I want to see the project done as well. I'm just taking my time with it, and I want it to be the best it can be. So, keep on watching. Hey guys, so judging by the comments I've been getting lately, it seems like a lot of you guys seem to want to build your own exoskeleton. A lot of you guys also seem to think that building an exoskeleton can happen overnight. 
Well, it can't. And it takes a while to design. And